intro. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh boy, I love this. I really do. So, America and Other World has dropped again, and today we are in the jungle. We're running through the jungle. Oh, God damn, I'm mean to talk about this. So, the latest two chapters that dropped, and I am sorry I did not review them right off the bat. I'm trying something new. I'm going to do. I'm going to see if the two chapter things actually lead to a really good video. But either way, though, back to it. America and Other World. Oh boy, what did we get from these two chapters? So, the elves have not learned their fucking lesson. Like, at all. They have not learned their lesson. But we did get a little insight into them, as well as how their military structure acts. So, moving on, of course, the Americans are still kicking ass. They're still bombing the shit out of them. And what I mean by that is that the elves, well, they're kind of learning a lesson that America learned about twice. Um... So, if there's anything that the elves are taking away from this one, is that the jungle is not a great place to fight. It really isn't. And we'll get into that a little later on, but... So what happened? Well, the American Air Cab, of course, is uh, telling our Maggie friends that, uh, you know, we, we got this. We got this. And got it, they do. Because they come in, they start basically gun running they start bombing the hell out of the elves the elves are literally losing tanks left and right they even lose half an armored division it is so good like it really is and what i gotta love is that they just do not learn they don't because once that bombing run starts or once that gun run starts it just brings warmness to my heart and I gotta love how that when the Apaches are coming in, and yes, the Apaches do come in, because the ground forces have not started yet. Yet, mind you, we're gonna probably get that soon. We're probably gonna get some ground fire soon, but... As the gun runs are continuing, the elves are now... They, they don't know what the hell to do. Because even when they are moving a division, or they're moving a column inward on the road... And they try to actually aim their, essentially, Panza anti-aircraft guns. They're getting blown to shit, because unlike modern anti-aircraft guns, which actually do have the technology to lock on to a moving target, be it a helicopter, or even a fast-moving jet, or even a long-range bomber, the old anti-aircraft systems was essentially just a crew of guys turning wheels fast as they can for their lives depending on it to try and lock onto a target. And when that target happens to be, I don't know, an Apache attack helicopter, you're not locking on to anything. You are a sitting duck. And that's what they are, a sitting duck. But here's the thing. After they get the shit bombed out of them, one of the officers actually does report the aircraft as a aircraft with a rotor on top. And one of the officers actually utters, they have helicopters? 
at which point in time my mind immediately clicked because it's like hold up what 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 <laughs> what 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 and then my mind went back of course digging through my historical knowledge knowing you know helicopters aren't really a new thing if you think about it because helicopters actually were being developed way back in the day and no I'm not talking about the gyrocopter I'm talking about actual helicopters uh, if I'm correct on my knowledge which let me go ahead and do a quick Google check to make sure I'm right on this in fact the first original helicopter which was the uh, Focke Wolf F W 61 being the first operational helicopter was in 1936 and they actually did reach limited production but it was not until 1942 the, that the helicopter design by Igor Suwiski reached full-scale production, and 131 aircraft were built. Although earlier designs were more of uh, were more than main rotors in the configuration of a single main rotor, you basically get what I mean. Helicopters have been around, have not been a new thing, and it would make sense that these elves, who are essentially fucking Nazi Germany, would try and create something to basically be more advanced technology than what they have and since we actually do hear them talk about them actually having a jet engine, which would be probably an ME-262 maybe, or, you know, something of that, of an early jet engine, which, once again, not really new technology and has been experimented with in our own timeline. So, if I had to take a shot in the dark and say what helicopter they actually have, uh, I believe it's the Dragonfly, maybe? So the one I'm thinking about is, of course, the... Um, Let's see if I can pronounce this correctly, and sorry if my German is not exactly good. The Falker Angus Akjiz FA223 Drashi, or Dragon, it was a helicopter designed by Germany during World War II, a single... Two, two, five, 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 five. You get what I'm saying. Essentially, it's, it's the FA223, so it might be that, which if you don't know what that is, here it is right here. Yeah, a basically something that kind of looks like an Osprey. Kind of. What's really cool is that when they actually report this back to, of course, Elf High Command with, of course, our Führer, the Elven Führer. And the Führer says, the is the master race. The higher, higher, right in the Führer's face. I've been waiting to use that clip. Oh, God, I'm so happy I was able to. Moving on. So, yeah, apparently the Nazi elves are, in fact, designing a helicopter, which makes sense, actually. Because, again, timeline-wise, in terms of technology, it makes sense that they would. However, they're a little gobstop that these humans actually have such advanced technology. And they're even a little more dumbfounded that they do have the ability to basically mount rockets on it to literally take out their tanks. And when asked the question, of course, of, uh, you know, should we hold the line, to many who have read the chapter and many I've talked to, they were a little furious that, uh, they were a little irritated that, of course, the Nazi Fuhrer, or the Nazi Elf Fuhrer, basically says, no, 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 we have to keep moving forward, we have to keep moving forward. And it actually does somewhat mention it, but not to a great degree, because, here's the thing, if you do not, uh, this goes to anyone who's ever played an RTS game, Band and Conquer, Red Alert 2, Love Red Alert 3. Moving on. <laughs> in any sort of combat situation, especially in a massive strategy situation, if you don't, if you do not keep the momentum up in your attacks, you're allowing the enemy to essentially be able to regain their strength. And you don't want to do that. If the enemy allows themselves to regain the strength that they need to actually either create a solid defensive line or even create a counterattack, it is going to be impossible for you to actually continue the momentum, which is understandable and I get why, but even then with your new information, the fact that the humans are uh, kind of kicking your ass at the moment and have essentially taken out, oh, I don't know, about, uh, I want to give a conservative estimate, 40% of your forces, if not 50% of your forces, and have essentially decimated your actual combat strength and effectiveness, I think you might want to reconsider what you're doing, and actually fully reconsider what your next strategy is going to be. Just saying, might want to reconsider it. 
going on. But with that said, the Intelligence Division, of course, in this book actually gives us an insight into how the military actually, well, kind of how the military structure works. Because the Intelligence Division is not exactly looked fondly upon by the military. Because the military wants funds to go to what they want. And I completely understand that. Because back during World War II, the military and intelligence divisions didn't exactly see eye to eye. Even during the Vietnam War, intelligence and military do not get along. And when I mean by, in, and when I mean by intelligence, I don't mean military intelligence. I mean actual central intelligence. Actual espionage, counterespionage, you know, that sort of thing. They don't get along. So it makes a lot of sense that the Intelligence Division, which <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they were a version of the SS or even the Gestapo, I'm not surprised that they don't get along. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where that goes to. But what I find uh, funny is that they're trying to warn the military and even trying to basically have it to where, look, we need to not... Be on the offensive, we need to gather intelligence and find out what the hell is going on. Also, could you stop killing people? We need some people alive to figure out what the hell is going on. Which the military responds with, we're just following orders. Okay. Just. Okay. Oh, that age old excuse that I fucking hate. Because that is the get-out-of-jail-free car right there. If any soldier is basically captured... Like, seriously, during World War II, after, during the Nuremberg Trials, it was literally... The most responses they ever got was, We were following orders. We were following orders. We were following orders. Okay, moving on. So, the book... The latest chapter actually ends with them looking over a newspaper that they were able to get from a not-destroyed house. And it talks about good old-fashioned USA and how we kicked the ass out of the otherworldly Brits. Them damn red coats. And that's how the book ends. And speculations for the next chapter, of course, is, um... Well, it's definitely something I'm going to be looking forward to because we know what's going to happen. Because the elves haven't learned about the jungle yet. We Americans? We learned that shit during WW2 when we fought the Japanese. Stay sharp. Poor bastard must have been shot down this morning. Fuselage is still smoking. Check for survivors. It's all snarled up on something. Shit! We're And then we learned that shit again during Viet Get Damn Nam. Teach recon, POW rescue. You know, give a shit. So we're about to take all that we've learned from fighting in the jungle, and we're about to turn it right on the elves. Because if the air cab ain't doing their thing, I know special forces probably doing their thing by hiding in the jungles and making the trees speak freedom. And if it's some good old fashioned southern boys, the trees are speaking yay yay! So yeah, that's what I can see happening is them literally teaching the, the elves exactly why fighting in the jungle is not exactly a good idea. But, until then, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to read the chapters yourself, the links will be down below to, of course, uh, the later, cha the newer chapters. That, well, basically, the chapters down below. Right down there. Go, 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 go. And if you like what I do, then consider donating to our PayPal down below. And let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of, this cha of these two chapters, and uh, give your own speculation of what's coming. I know exactly what's going to come. Hopefully. I haven't been wrong yet. I can smell the napalm. I smell you, Charlie. I know you in the trees. Till next time.